I want to make an emphatic declaration this morning. You leave here with nothing else. You leave here understanding this one thing. You at war. That's it. We can go home. At this moment in your life, right now, not yesterday, not tomorrow, if you are not living the life that our Creator has destined for you, that is living life more abundantly in your emotional life, your financial life, your social life, uh, in your family, in your job, in your private life, in your pr- if you're not living life as God has destined and ordained for you to live more abundantly, it's a good chance you're not because you have been at war with some giants. Giants, giants, giants are situations, circumstances, events, and people in your life that in some shape or way have overwhelmed you so much so that they have the potential to distract and deter you from becoming an effective Jesus follower. I'll say it again. A giant, events, circumstances, people in your life that have overwhelmed you so much so that you have become distracted or deterred from being an effective Jesus followers. Flaws, addictions, shortcomings. I'm, uh, trust me, I'm not expecting any amens this morning. I brought my own amens in my pocket. Blind spots, trials, anything bigger than you, anything stronger than you, anything faster than you, anything smarter than you, it's a good chance that it is a giant in your life. I like, I like, I like Revelations chapter 12, verse 7. It says, Then there was a war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon and his angels. And the dragon lost the battle and his angels were forced out of heaven. This was before the foundations of the earth. Then the great dragon, the ancient serpent called the devil or Satan, the one deceiving the whole world was thrown down to the earth with all his angels. Then I heard a loud voice shouting across the heavens. It has come at last salvation and power in the kingdom of God, the kingdom of our God and the authority of Christ for the accuser of our brothers and sisters has been thrown down to earth, the one who accuses them before our God day and night. What are you saying, preacher? I'm glad you asked. The one thing about our giants is that the enemy strategically places them at certain points in your life, at certain entry points, at certain ups, at certain downs, the enemy knows how to strategically place giants in your life to keep you bound, to keep you from progressing, to keep you from becoming who God has called you to become. It's a good chance that you hadn't left that job because a giant is keeping you afraid of stepping out on faith. It's a good chance that you're not doing what God has called you to do because a giant somehow, somewhere has stood in your way and you don't have the confidence. The enemy strategically places giants in our lives to keep us bound from being and doing and becoming who God has called us to become. There are four things you need to know. You need to know, I know you don't have a table, but you need to write this down. There are four things that giants are aimed to do. Number one, Giants are aimed to intimidate, manipulate, interfere, and to protect. I'm going to say it again. Don't worry about it. Giants will do four things in your life. Giants will do four things. They will intimidate. That is, they will try to keep or prevent you from entering into what belongs to you, to keep you from entering into a new season. Giants intimidate 
Moses, the children of Israel, they were under the oppression of Pharaoh. They were intimidated. They were afraid to leave. But God, but God came along, raised Moses, and then he had released them from Egypt. And although God released them from Egypt, many of them still chose to serve Pharaoh. You missed that. Although God will release you from your Egypt, he can't make you stop serving Pharaoh. Intimidate, intimidate. Giants, are ser they serve the purpose of intimidating you. Manipulating, manipulating. They manipulate you by projecting lies unto your life, hoping that you will take those lies and make them the law of your life. They come, they come to manipulate. They, when you look at Ruth, when you look at Ruth and Naomi, Naomi had lost her husband. She had lost all of her wealth and she's now in Moab and she's, she's now, in, she wants to be alone. She doesn't think she's worth anything. She doesn't think anybody would ever love her unconditionally. She believed the lies that the, the, in, the lies that the invisible giant wanted her to believe so much so that a woman named Ruth came along and loved her for her, not for what she had, and she couldn't see it, and she almost pushed Ruth away. Invisible giant. The giants want you to believe or they want to manipulate you into believing the lies so you can make those lies the law of your life. They also serve the purpose of interfering. They want to, they want to slow the progress that you are making in your life. They serve to interfere, to stand in the gap, to stand in the way, to keep you from becoming who God has called you to become. You look at Nehemiah chapter 6 verses four, 1 through 4. They had come back from, from being in captive from the Babylonian captivity and Nehemiah had raised some people and they come back and they're now rebuilding the walls of Jerusalem. And in chapter 6 they had been rebuilding the walls and, and, and Nehemiah is on top of the wall and, he, and the Bible says that there were some giants by, by, by way of government officials, one named Sanballat. And, and so when Sanballat saw that Nehemiah was closing the gaps of the wall and that he was making progress, the Bible says that he became infuriated because there are some people, there are some giants that do not want to see see you progress in life to become better, to do better, and to see better. And so the giant, by way of Sanballat, tried to spread lies about, about Nehemiah, trying to get other people to believe lies about you. And the Bible says in chapter 6 that he was on top of the wall. And then they heard the people spreading all these rumors. They said, hey, you got to come down and you got to defend the rumors about you. He looked down off of the wall. And he said, I'm up here doing a good work. I cannot come down to your level of deficiency. I am saying that there are some giants who serve the purpose of interfering with what God is trying to do in your life. And sometimes you have to look at your giant from where you are and you have to say, I cannot come down to your level of deficiency. I'm doing a good work. I'm preaching to myself right now. They serve the purpose of intimidating. They serve the purpose, what's that second one I said, of manipulating. They serve the purpose of interfering. But then they also serve the purpose of protecting what belongs to you. I know you missed it, let me help you. When you went, when you look at Numbers chapter 13, if you come from the north, you will notice that the annex were there. If you come from the west, you, from the Mediterranean Sea, you would notice that the Canaanites were there by the water. If you come from the east, you will, uh, from the hill country, you would notice the Jebusites, the Hittites, and the Amorites were there. If you came from the southern valley of the Negev, you would notice that the Amalekites were there. They were protecting the land no matter where you came in this promised land. There were giants strategically protecting this entire land, and you need to know something. The most valuable asset to a giant is unconquered territory. I can leave you with that. The most valuable asset 
to any giant is a territory that has not been claimed. It belongs to you, but you still hadn't walked into your destiny. So you're going to always have something, someone, somebody, some giant that is standing protecting what belongs to you. They say, they say the most, the most important, the most valuable place in the world, the most wealthy place in the world, it's not Silicon Valley. A lot of money there. But they say the most important, the most wealthy place in the world is the cemetery. Because there at the cemetery, there are a lot of books that have not been written. There are a lot of inventions that have not been invented. There are a lot of unconquered territory in the cemetery because giants have strategically placed themselves in the lives of people their entire life you have lived you've done a whole lot of stuff you've been a whole lot of places but you still have not conquered the territory that God said belong to you why am I yelling God has given you a land it already belongs to you. But there are giants that are placed at every entryway. No matter where you look, no matter where you go, you're feeling something, you're seeing something, you don't feel adequate, there's something going on. You gotta think about this, how do I make, how do I pay these bills? What about this, I'm insecure. I don't, there are giants everywhere. But, but, but they're gonna stay there because their job is to make sure that they intimidate you, manipulate you, they interfere, and they protect what belongs to you. But when we look at this text, I was looking and I was looking, and I told you last week, but God had revealed some things to me, and, and it was just so, so, it was so, it was so incredible. That when I'm looking at Numbers chapter 13 and last week, Val, we talked about the fact that Goliath is from Gath. You have to know who your giant is and you have to know where your giant comes from because if you don't know who you're wrestling with and you don't know why you're wrestling with, then you're just wrestling by yourself. And so you got to stop and, you, and this is emotional spirituality. You got to stop and you got to wonder why is it that I feel the way I feel? Why is it that I respond the way I respond? Why is it that I'm so afraid to do this? Why is it that I can't step up? Why is it that I can't step out? And you have to locate it. Where did it come from? I know you don't want to, but nobody else is going to do it for you. And as long as you don't do it, the giant is satisfied. When we look at this text, we look at this text, the Bible says, the Bible says that, that, that when they went over there and to spy out this land, they saw these three giants and they were descendants of Anak, A-N-A-K. And I began to look, look and research, research this giant, Anak, the Anak, and Anak, and you know what I discovered. That Anak, Anak comes from the word neck. And it also comes from the word to choke. And, and, and so annex, 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 the annex, these giants, these spiritual giants, these giants, they would adorn their neck with, with, with ornaments. And they would adorn their neck with so many ornaments, so much so that it would choke them. You're missing it. Anak, 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 they, they, they would adorn their necks with ornaments. They would accumulate possessions. These are your giants of materialism. And so and so and so, when, before we go anywhere, we, we, we run into the first giant, the first of six giants. And some of us need to understand that your giant might be the giant, the Anak, the giant of materialism, the giant that you're so worried about accumulating possessions to getting more. I need more. And if you don't think that you're that giant, maybe in your life you say to yourself, how much stuff I have or how much stuff I don't have, that is indication of how much God loves me. I pause right there. If you use the rubric that if I have a new car, that means God loves me, God is blessing me, but if I'm still riding my hoopy, God don't really care about me, you might be suffering from the, 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 the giant, the anic, the anic, the anic. See, 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 God or, or, or the enemy rather, the enemy would love for you to be conquered by the giant anic. 
He wants you to make sure that you become so focused on accumulating more stuff, so much so that you choke what God is trying to do in your life. The anic, the anic, anic, your neck, your neck, you, you, you're accumulating all these possessions and you don't realize all of these possessions, all of this material wealth that you think you need to have, you really don't need to have. Maybe your giant is the anic, but it's okay. I'm coming down your street. You keep looking, you keep looking, you keep looking. There was another, there was another giant, there was another giant called uh, the Amalekites, the Amalekites, the Amalekites, the Amalekites. The Amalekites, the Amalekites, uh, Amalek, Amalek, Amalek. I was looking, I was looking, out, and, I, and I was trying to research the, 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 the Amaleks, the Am Amalekites, and, and, and their name means dweller in the valley. Dweller in the valley. These wore your nomadic people, the nomads. These were the people who were always moving, always shifting, can never commit to something. They can never, they can never, is my mic on? Because I need my mic to be on right now. Can, can, can you hear me? Okay, that's good. The, when you look at the Amalekites, these were your people who were, were nomads. They couldn't commit. They were commitment foe. They, they, they were indecisive. They always say, I'm going to do this, but they were always shifting, trying to go and run somewhere else. Your Amalekites, I, I'm going to make sure that, I, that, that they're, they're always searching and never satisfied. They always need something else. They always need something more. This is not perfect. I need a little more. Your Amalekites, dweller in the valley, they were in the valley and they were always moving. They were always running. They were always shifting. You can't stay here in this relationship. You can't stay on this job. You got to move from this apartment. You think if you move to Texas or if you move to San Francisco, things are going to be well. Maybe you are wrestling with this giant, the Amalekites. You're never satisfied. You can't make a commitment. You think that you cannot be satisfied in decision. But see, indecision and insatiable appetite, this is indicative. Hold on one second. I ain't worried about this giant gonna get conquered today. I need, I need you to uh, bring me that uh, handheld mic. I'll bring you the handheld mic today. We're going to pause right now because we're recording this. Can you hear me, can you hear me now? Can, can, can you hear me now? Good. All right. Now we're going to unpause. We were talking about the Amalekites. The Amalekites, the nomadic people, the people who are always searching, always searching, looking for the next best thing, never satisfied, never still. You can't sit still. You're always moving. Maybe the Amalekites, the Amalek giant is your giant. I know you don't have to confess it, but you need to recognize it. The Amalekites, always searching, always searching. But then there was another, there was another giant. The Bible says that they saw these Hittites. Everybody say Hittites. Give me a little more bottom. Give me a little more bottom. No, no, I need him to give me a little more bottom. There were these Hittites. There we go. But when I was looking at Hittites, when I was looking at Hittites, when I was looking at Hittites, Hittite means terror, fear. And so the Hittite these giants were the ones who inflicted and enacted fear among the inhabitants in the land. And if you read about the Hittites, the Hittites were the ones who chased, in the future, if you keep reading, chased the Israelites up into the mountain. So now they are forced to live in the mountain and afraid to come down and live in the land that God had given them. Afraid. Some of us, some of us, you might be, no, you're wrestling with the Hittite giant because you've been saying that you're going to come down and you're going to live more abundantly. You're going to do what God has called you to do. You're going to try that new job. You're going to try that new destiny. You're going to, you, and somebody said an invisible line, but you are too afraid because the Hittite giant has you by your neck. What are you afraid of? 
You don't, you don't, you don't have enough. You need more. You, 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 you're afraid the Hittite giant, the Hittite giant is destined, it's, it's, it's there so that you can operate in fear. There's this boundary, the Hittite giant, the Hittite giant that, that the Hittite giant has over your life and you're afraid to step out because this giant is making you think about everything you don't have and how it won't work. The Hittite giant, the Hittite giant. There was one more. No, there was a couple more. There was the, the Jebusites. Everybody say Jebusites. So, 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 so I was reading on Jebusites. I was reading about the Jebusites and the Jebusites and the Jebusites and the Jebusites. And Jebusite means downtrodden, rejection. And, 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 and these giants were, were known to, 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 to try down the people to reject the people, to desecrate the land. And, and, and when I'm looking at this word and I'm looking at these giants and I'm, I'm, I'm thinking and I'm thinking and I said, you know, this giant impacts your attitude. This giant is the giant that promotes self-hate. This is the giant that forces you to look into the mirror and instead of seeing the beautiful person in the image of God, you see what had happened to you. And so, so the downtrodden, this Jebusite giant is the giant that is keeping you from operating in your purpose because your attitude is all messed up. You're still feeling sorry about yourself. Nobody loves me. I can't, you know, I, 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 need, I need to look better before I do better. Downtrodden, downtrodden, downtrodden. And why are you so defeated? Because this Jebusite, this Jebusite giant has gotten a hold of your life and you are, your attitude has been impacted and you're unable to operate the way God wants you to operate. You need to defeat the Jebusite giant in your life, your attitude. There is another giant. It's a giant called the Amorite. I was looking at the Amorite. I was looking at the Amorite and I'm looking at the Amorite and it comes from the word a sayer a sayer. And so there's so many things about this, but, but ultimately, the Amorite giant is the giant that leads to pride. The one who talks a whole lot. The one who is boastful. The one is talking about self and all of my accomplishments and all the things that I'm doing and how busy I am and how much I'm accumulating. The, the, the Amorite giant also can be the giant that is, is, is a gossiper. You ain't got to say nothing on that. And so, and so when I'm looking, I'm saying, you know, for many of us, our giant may be the Amorite giant because you know you talk more about what you're doing and less about what God is doing in your life. And you need people to validate you and validate what you're doing because there's an Amorite giant that is pulling strings in your life and keeping you from depending solely on what God is trying to do. The pride. The pride. But then there was another giant, and this is the last one. There was the Canaanite giant. Everybody say Canaanite. When we're looking at the Canaanite giant, I was looking, I was looking, I was looking, and, 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 and the word for Canaanite was a merchant that humiliates. A merchant who humiliates. See, the Canaanites, the Canaanite giants, the Canaanites, they were merchants. They were traffickers. They were businessmen and women. They would go from door to door. They would stand down with the caravans. They would find all the trade routes, and they would sell whatever they can sell to you. They wanted to sell you things that you didn't need to have. Their goal was to keep you making bad financial decisions so that you could be bound by your finances. Some of us in here are wrestling with the Canaanite giant because you're consistently making bad financial natural decisions and you can't do because you're looking at what your bank account has or does not you have some of us have made some bad financial decisions some of us are buying things that we don't need you say that you're going to save you say that you're going to get out of debt but every time your credit card statement is still increasing because there's a Canaanite a Canaanite giant in your life that is keeping you bound by your finances. I know some of us are paying alimony and paying, you know, our ex-spouse. 
and you can't do what you think you need to do because you're bound. There's a Canaanite God, or a giant, that is keeping you bound with bad financial decisions, the lack of self-discipline, and you cannot become who God wants you to become because you ain't got enough money. You're always shopping. You're always buying things that you don't need to buy. That's all right. But, but all that's good. We're almost finished. So I was looking at these six giants that they listed in this passage. And then still the question was, well, how? I've identified these six giants that most people, if not all of us, will encounter at some point in our lives. Some of us are wrestling with more than one giant right now. But then the question is, well, how do I defeat these? I'm glad you asked, because I gave you some points that you need to take with you today. When we look at 1 Samuel chapter 17, let me remind you that last week we looked at this passage, and this is the passage where David had slayed Goliath. We came, we preached from this passage two other times, but I want to take a different look at it and pull some more nuggets out. So I'm going to give you four things you need to do if you're going to slay the giant or giants in your life. Let's read this passage. The Bible says, 1 Samuel chapter 17, what I have recorded is 23 through 26, verse 32, verses 45 through 50. Just read with me and listen to uh, the reading of the word. It says... As he was talking with them, this is David, Goliath, the Philistine champion from Gath, came out from the Philistine ranks. Then, then David heard him shoot his usual taunt to the enemy, the army of Israel. And all, the, and all of the men of Israel, when they saw the man, fled from him and were dreadfully afraid. Everybody say afraid. Have you seen the giant? The man asked. He comes out each day to defy Israel. The king has offered a huge reward to anyone who kills him. He will give that man one of his daughters for a wife, and that man's entire family will be exempted from paying taxes. David spoke to the men who were standing, everybody say standing, with him. What will be done for the man who kills that Philistine and removes his disgrace from Israel? Just who is this uncircumcised Philistine that he should defy the armies of the living God. Then verse 45 says, David then, something happened. David then replied to the Philistine, you come to me with sword, spear, and javelin, but I come to you in the name of the Lord of heaven's armies, the God of the armies of Israel, whom you have defied. Today, everybody say today, the Lord will conquer you and I will kill you and cut off your head. And everyone assembled here will know that the Lord rescues his people, but not with sword and spear. This is the Lord's battle, and he will give you to us. As Goliath moved closer, David quickly ran out to meet him, reaching into his shepherd's bag and taking out how many stones? One stone. He hurled it with his sling and hit the Philistine in the forehead. The stone sank in. And Goliath stumbled and fell to the ground. Don't forget the most important part. So David triumphed over the Philistine with only one sling and one stone, for he had no sword. Then the Bible says that David ran over and pulled Goliath's sword from his sheath. David used him to kill him and cut off his head. And from these verses I have for you your four points on how you are to defeat your giant number one you need fortitude write it down we're going to walk this thing down slow but I'm going to get through it quick you need fortitude fortitude is mental and emotional strength in facing difficulties adversity and temptation courageously. You need fortitude. What are you saying, Isaac? I'm glad you asked. When we look at this passage, the Bible says 
and all of the men of Israel, when they saw the man, they ran. And they were dreadfully afraid. The Bible didn't say that all of the men ran and David stood there in confidence. The Bible said that everybody ran and they all were dreadfully afraid. There was a point in this passage that even David ran and David hid with all of the men. And so they're all now in some position of fear because they saw a giant and so David is among them and they all have ran and they're all afraid at one point in time. Then something happened. David realized that God would never send you without information, a supporting cast, and a promise. You can write that one down. David realized that God, God would never send you out. He would never send you anywhere without information, a supporting cast, and a promise. Don't allow your giant to make you forget that you have an assignment. You can look at Abraham. When God called Abraham out, he told him, I need you to get up and I need you to go. But where you go, I'm going to be with you. The people who bless you, I will bless them. And I'm going to make you a father of many nations, but I need you to go. He gave him information. He gave him a supporting cast when he said, I'm going to go with you. And he made him a promise. I'm going to make you famous and I'm going to make you a father of many nations. Even when he spoke to Moses. Moses says, you want me to go and speak to Pharaoh? He says, yeah, I need you to go to speak to Pharaoh. I need you to release my people because the Egyptians are treating them bad. But, but, but I'm going to go with you. And he said, he said, but what if he says, tell them that I am sent you. He, he gave him information, told him what he needed to do. And he gave him the supporting case. He said, I'm going to be with you. And he made him a promise. Even Joshua, even Joshua, we look a little more in this text. He said, Joshua, listen, I make a promise to you that I made to Moses. Everywhere you go, every place your feet steps, that will belong to you. He gave him a promise. He was his supporting cast. But he also gave him information. But when we look at this passage, it's important because David we don't hear anything about any information. But see, David already knows because David had already been wrestling with giants and bears. And so David spoke to the giant what God had already spoke to him. He already told him, I have the information, I have the promise, and I have the supporting cast who is God. He spoke confidently to his giant. But listen, listen, listen. So he was hiding. Then he came to the realization that God is with him. And so then he gets up, and then, he, and then the Bible says that he speaks to the men who were standing with him. It might be that you're standing with the wrong people. If you're not making the step and the progress that you need to make, if you're still going in circles, if you're, if you're not doing and becoming who God is, has destined you to be, you may need to look around because you might be running with the wrong people. David realized, David realized the Bible says that he stood with the men who were standing nearby him and he said, hey, wh what are we running for again? I, I got an assignment and, and I got to do my assignment even if I go by myself, but I have have my information I have my supporting cast and I have my promise and now I'm gonna walk out even if I have to walk by myself the Bible says that then he begins to walk out he begins to say I have a, a giant that I need to conquer you need fortitude but look there was another thing that happened in this fortitude this is this is really important it said that he spoke to the giant right you have to speak to your giant what God has already spoken to you you got to speak confidently to what God has already given you. You have to talk to your giant with authority. But get this. He says, the Lord will conquer you. But I will kill you. Man, we can stop right here. He says, the Lord will conquer you. But I 
will kill you. Say it again. He says, the Lord will conquer you. But I, I'm going to kill you. Something you need to understand. God won't always obliterate your oppressors and your enemies. Many times, God will take the victory from them. But you still must have the experience of defeating them yourself. I'm going to say it again. Many times, God will not obliterate your enemy. God will sometimes just take the victory out of your enemy's hand. And you will have to be the one that has the experience of defeating the enemy yourself. I know you've been praying, Lord, take away my insecurities. God is saying, are you not paying attention? I've taken the victory away from your insecurities, but you have to be the one that defeats your insecurities. I know, I know, God, 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 I need you to help me. I need you to help me to be more confident. The Lord said, I have already taken the victory of what's defeating you, but you have to be the one to stand up, and now you have to speak to the giant because you don't, they don't have victory over you. Because if God, if God obliterated all of your enemies, you never have the experience of standing up to your giants yourself. God will take the victory from your giant. But you're the one that has to kill it yourself. But then, number two, number one is you need fortitude. You come to the battle to fight. Some of us, we've been praying, but we don't want to fight. We've been praying, but we don't want to fight. You need fortitude. If you're going to defeat your giant, you need fortitude, but you also need faith. You need faith. Everybody say faith, faith, faith. Then, then verse 47, and everyone assembled here will know that the Lord rescues his people, but not with sword and spear the lord this is the lord's battle and he will give it to all of us get this get this god will give you the victory but not the way you expect for it to come faith is what you're going to need to speak to your giant get this get this faith and facts don't always go hand in hand Faith does not always make sense. You can't always calculate faith. If you can calculate and measure faith so that it makes sense, it is no longer faith. Faith is the lens. Faith is the, the filter that changes what, that takes what you see and changes what you say. I'm going to say it again. Faith is the filter that takes what you see and changes what you say. The Bible says, the Bible says that even over in Numbers that they had all the Israelites, they saw the giants and then they said, we can't conquer those giants. They saw the giants and they said, we couldn't conquer them. But then you see Joshua and Caleb, they saw the giants and they said, God can conquer them. When you look at all the Israel army, they saw the giants and they saw what they couldn't do but then David saw Goliath and he saw what God could do faith will take what you see and change what you say because what you see and what you say won't always make sense I see a giant this giant is stronger this giant is taller this giant is quicker than I, but I I can conquer the giant that doesn't make sense it doesn't make sense because I don't have enough strength your your faith is the filter that will take what you see and change what you say. You have to have, you have to have faith. Faith is, I wanted to say this one thing, faith is countercultural and it counters reason. It just does not always make sense. You, you have to have fortitude. You got to be ready to fight. You have to have faith. This is not your battle, it's God's battle. And you have to speak confidently to, to, to whatever your giant is. But you also need to have focus. You need to have focus. You need to have focus. What do you mean have focus? When we look at the Bible, the Bible says that when, when David began to walk out, and I'm, and I'm almost finished, when he began to walk out, when the giant came running to him, the Bible says that he, he took out one stone. 
He took the one stone and then he slung the one stone and hit the giant right between the eyes. You got to focus. You got to focus. You got to focus. He took one stone to defeat the giant. You got too much going on and you're trying to accomplish or conquer your giant. You got too many things going on and you got too many stones in your hand. You need to focus on one thing and do one thing well. Every time the New Year's come around, I get all these things I'm trying to do and you're doing all these things, but you don't do one thing well. If you're going to conquer your giant, set one goal. Do one thing well. Don't worry about a lot of different things. You need to focus on one stone. Not many. He took, he took, he took one stone. He aimed and he focused on that one thing. You got to, you got to set your priorities, set your goals. And, and if you're going to write a book, then you need to say, I, when I wrote my No Regrets book, I had to turn down being a, a professor at the school. I had to turn down going on a missionary trip and building up the missionary team here at Hope Church. I had to turn down a lot of different things because I said, you know what? I say I'm going to do a whole lot of things, but I'm not doing one thing well. I'm going to do one thing and I'm going to focus on that one thing and I'm not going to stop until I do that one thing. And you're going to have to turn other things. You have a giant, you have things that you want to do, but the only way you're going to do it is if you learn how to focus on one thing i don't care what the if you want to get out of debt if you want to pay that one credit card off i need you to focus on that one thing don't worry about it. i need one thing you need to put down on your paper what is the one thing that i want to see accomplished in my not two I, I would try to coach, I try to coach, life coach, and help people. And I say, okay, what's the one thing you want to do? I want to do this, and I want to do, uh, what is the one thing you want? I want to do this, but I also, what is the one thing you want to do? I want to do this, but I want, uh, what is the one thing you want to see done in your life? And that's the one thing you need to focus on. Don't worry about everything else. And you can have these little incremental goals that get you to that one thing. If you're going to conquer your giant focus on that one giant so you have fortitude faith focus but then the last thing is you got to have follow through you got to have follow through what do you mean follow through i'm glad you asked the bible says that he focused on that giant he threw that rock at the giant and then the giant the bible says failed and was conquered the giant then fell and was conquered. But for David, conquering the giant was not good enough. He said that God will conquer you, but I'm going to kill you. And so the giant fell and everybody was afraid and the people started celebrating. But he said, I'm not finished doing what I set out to do. I know I paid the credit card down just enough. And now it's just, uh, I, need you to, I need you to get rid of the credit card. I need you to get it to zero balance. Whatever. I, I'm not, I don't worry about my appearance as much as I, I need you to get rid of all of the insecurity. And, and he, said, he said, the giant failed. The giant was conquered. But he said, if I'm going to conquer my giants, I need to make sure I follow through. So the Bible says he ran, he ran, he ran to the giant, he ran to the giant. He stood over the giant. He took out the sword that belonged to the giant. And then he cut the giant's neck. Because he said that he was going to do something. And what he said he was going to do, that is what he had done. And some of us have some giants that you've been wrestling with your entire life. You've been saying you're going to conquer it. You've been saying you're going to do better. And you're still in the same situation because you don't have the fortitude. You came, but you don't want to fight. You say you have faith, but you're really not putting your faith into action. And you refrain from focusing on the one thing that you need to do. But even in focusing... Some of us have gotten down to the focus and you, you, you've gotten so close, but you still lack follow through. You still have not followed through what you said you were going to do. 
And because you didn't follow through, you gave Goliath a chance to heal. And now Goliath gets back up. It ain't even in my notes, but is it? Hey, but I'm saying. So, so now, so now, so now, that Goliath, he, he's down, he's conquered, but because you didn't follow through with your goal, Goliath has gotten back up. Goliath has been resurrected, and Goliath is stronger than ever because you didn't follow through with your goals. You didn't follow through saying and doing what you set out to do. But get this God is already taking the victory from your giant. God has already given you the land. He's already given you the victory to your destiny, to what it is that you say you want to do. God has already given you the victory. You just have to be the one to go in and to slay the giants and to get them out the way. Fortitude, faith, focus, and follow through. This is what David did. And if we do what David did, we'll be able to accomplish our giants too. In the name of Jesus, we pray. I pray that God blesses each of you today, tomorrow, and forevermore as you leave from this place and never from God's presence. I pray that you don't just listen to the words, that you allow the words to be ingested and you digest them and that you guard them with your life. I pray that when you leave here, there will be some giants right outside the door who are going to try to invoke fear in your life, who, who's going to try to remind you of your past, who are going to try to keep you downtrodden, try to keep you to look at yourself and, and not approve of yourself. There are going to be giants when you walk out these doors. It is my prayer that you speak confidently to your giants because you already got the victory. God has already given you the land and all you have to do is walk into your destiny. I pray that God gives you fortitude. I pray that God gives you faith. I pray that God gives you focus. And I pray that God gives you follow through in the name of Jesus. And all of God's people said together, amen. You all be at peace. Have a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful day. Thank you for coming, and may God be with you. God be with you.